It's day three of the five day energy reset. And today we're going to talk about your seven energy centers. There's seven energy centers that you can tap into, get them reset, get them activated so that you can really show up as your best on this roller coaster of life. Whether you want to be a stronger leader at work, whether you want to be a better parent, whether you just want to feel better physically, it's your energy centers that are driving all of that. Now on days one and two, we did a couple of exercises that were about awareness. We did a visualization to jump six months into the future to really feel what you want. And then I had you journal about it. Then yesterday I had you look at the roadblocks and the stressors that historically and maybe at work right now have held you back from reaching goals in the past because you really want to have some awareness around those things. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the energy centers that are active in all of us. They can be drained, they can be activated, and they can be balanced. And we're going to figure out where you specifically might need to get a little bit of a reset going on in these seven energy centers. This will make more sense as I'm talking about it. Now bear with me because this is going to be a little bit longer video than normal because we have to talk about seven energy centers. But know that at any given time in your life, any of those seven could be overactive or drained. The dynamics of our lives impact the emotions that we feel. And every emotion that we can feel is a type of energy. So when I say energy, it's not just like, Wah! you know, that feeling of like, hi, I'm super excited and up and positive. That's kind of what you default think of when you hear, oh, I need energy. But any emotion you can feel is a type of energy. So you can bring sad energy to your day. You can bring happy energy to your day. You can bring anxious energy to your day. You can bring depressed energy to your day. You can bring stress energy to your day. You can bring overjoyed energy to your day. I like to say that energy is emotion in action. I'll just say that again, write it down. This is my saying. I didn't make the, I didn't steal it from someone. This is my saying. Energy is emotion in action. So it's up to you to say, how do you want your emotions to show up in your life so that you can move forward in a way that's powerful for you with your career, with your relationships, with your health, with anything that you want to show up as, as a goal and a, and a, the way you want your life to have meaning. Your emotions determine how you're going to take action. So today we're going to talk about these seven energy centers, even though there's thousands of emotions that you can experience, right? That, like probably more than thousands of, of emotions you can experience. There are seven key energy centers that are driven by certain emotions, different feelings, different actions that can really take you to that next level, that you can really get reset, which is what this is all about, is the energy reset that we're doing for five days so that you can then move forward with more powerful engagement in your work and in your life. Okay. So I have notes that I don't forget anything. I don't want to forget anything with the different seven energies. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to tell you the seven energies and how you can identify whether you might be overactive in those energies or underactive or balanced. And I want you to refer back to your stressors because those can be really good indicators of whether you're overactive or underactive. Okay. The vision that you had on the first day, your stressors that you identified yesterday, keep those in the back of your mind as I'm talking about these. Okay. So the first energy is motivation. Now motivation energy is generally felt at your root, which is at your tailbone down here. You see it? Wearing jeans. Let's feel it at your tailbone. And that energy center, that motivation energy is really responsible for driving you forward. It's being able to kick yourself in the butt and take those next steps because you feel safe. You feel grounded in the moment and you know that, okay, I've got the emotional and energetic bandwidth to move forward with my next task or this new idea or this next goal. Motivation has been in the toilet the last few years because we've been under massive stress. We've been under massive change in our world, in our societies, in our lives. And that creates fear. It creates unknown. It creates massive anxiety that 
absolutely shuts down motivation because we're just trying to get through today. So to be able to take on another project, another goal, another task, our bodies and brains can't process what that looks like. And so our motivation, it's, it's crap. <laughs> so when you think about your motivation over the last couple of years and where it's at right now, I'm going to give you some indicators as to how you might know whether it's drained, overactive, or balanced. So your motivation is drained if you feel unfocused, if you feel spacey, if you feel disconnected, if you feel a lot of fear, if you're tired and lethargic. That could be a sign that your motivation energy is really drained. You could also have overactive energies in these different seven energy centers. If it's overactive, you could be kind of a workaholic. You're just going, going, and grinding, and grinding, and hustling, and hustling, overactive all the time, and just not able to turn off. Um, another sign would be that you overeat. You're overeating to kind of numb the, the emotion and energy that's happening to help slow it down because digestion requires you to put energy into something else that slows everything else down so that energy can be shifted to digestion. So overeating is a sign that you might be overactive. Um, over <laughs> Overspending, retail therapy, hoarding, you know, bringing things into you, that's a sign that that motivation energy is overactive. So those are a couple of things. Uh, if you're nice and balanced in your motivation energy, you're going to feel grounded. You're going to feel stable. You're going to feel safe. You're going to feel like when you wake up in the morning, you're excited about your day, that you're ready to go, that you know it doesn't take you hours and hours to get your day kind of flowing. You're able to bounce out of bed like, yes, I'm ready to go because I'm excited about what I'm doing. I'm motivated to keep my day going. Um, generally, you're relatively focused. You feel like you have a purpose and you're able to see that purpose and take action to make it happen. So those are some examples as to whether you're overactive, drained, or balanced in your motivation energy. So just make a little note where you think you might be. Now the next energy is creativity energy and that lives in the area between your belly button and your pubic bone. So right down here in your lower abdomen is where your creativity energy lives. And this energy is really important because you need to have your passions fired up. You need to be able to creativity, creatively use the things around you to solve problems, to have fun at work, to have fun with your family and loved ones. So creativity energy is really critical just, just to ensure that your endorphins spike, that you have that feel good, that feel good vibe both in your professional and your personal life because that charges up all kinds of things in your world. So I'm going to give you some now indications as to how you might know whether your creativity energy is drained, overactive, or balanced. Okay, So you might be drained in your creativity energy if you're fearful of change, that you're kind of stuck and you just want to stay in your little comfort zone in your safety bubble. Um, if you have fear of trying new things, if you're really rigid in the way that you approach problems, in the way that you go after life, you need routine, and if anything goes off path, you're like, oh, you just go absolutely crazy and mental. Um, if you're bored, boredom is a sign that your creative energy is drained. Um, having poor social skills, <laughs> not an introvert like me, that doesn't mean poor social skills, but where you're truly unable to engage with other people. You don't care what they're into, what there is going on in their life, where you're apathetic to just kind of what's going on in the world around you and just, ugh, you just don't care. Those are some signs you might be drained in your creativity energy. Uh, some things that you might be overactive is having addictive personality. Addictive, you're addicted to certain things, whether it's uh, alcohol, drugs, sex, shopping, working, you know, that working out, even exercise, you can have that addictive personality where you need that endorphin boost, which comes from creativity energy and passion energy. So that type of like over, over addiction is a sign that your creativity, creativity energy is overstimulated. Uh, a couple other things are, is mood swings. If you're 
really happy and then you're really sad and you're really happy and you're really sad. It means that you don't have that creativity creativity energy flowing at a normal steady rate and when you don't have it flowing you crash and then you have it and you're up and then you don't have it and you crash so that's another sign um, if you're an adrenaline junkie if you really thrive on uh, having your adrenaline just hit you know you love skydiving you love working out you love doing scary stuff you love uh, anything that just gets that 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 those feel-good pleasure chemicals going but in a way where it's an addiction is another example where your creativity energy might be overstimulated. Now, if you're balanced in your creativity energy, you really feel like you're in the flow state. You've got creative flow, you've got engagement in tasks that you enjoy in your life that make the day and the time just fly away. You're doing tasks at work that you love. Um, you're open to change, you're open to new ideas, uh, other people's activities and interests excite you. You like to hear about those kinds of things. Uh, you're really emotionally intelligent where you're able to see other people's situations and emotions and say, oh, okay, I get that. I get why they're doing that. And here's how I can engage in a more positive, creative way. So those are some signs of overactive, drained, and balanced with creativity energy. So just make a note where you think you are with your creativity energy. Now the next one is confidence energy. That lives right below your rib cage. Your confidence energy is right below your rib cage where you, like if you do a plank or you, you like squeeze your muscles, you can feel it come together right there. That is where confidence energy lies. And confidence can be overactive, it can be drained, or it can be balanced. So make a note of where you think you might be after I explain where those, how those energies how this energy shows up. So confidence energy, your confidence might be drained if you're feeling stuck, if you're stagnant, if you're in a place where you're like, oh, I just, I don't know what to do with myself. I don't know how to show up. And you just kind of feel like you don't know what your purpose is. That's a sign your confidence energy may be drained. Um, another is if you're, you have low self-esteem, low confidence, uh, you're feeling bad about yourself, you have a lot of internal negative talk, mean talk to yourself, oh, you look fat, or you're such an idiot, or why would you do something like that? That's confidence energy really being drained hard. And um, another is being uh, passive and not showing up to meetings, not speaking your mind, not uh, taking control of decisions. Those are signs that your confidence energy might be low, might be drained. Now, it could also be overactive. You could also have really overactive confidence if your ego is taking over. If you're showing up with a lot of, a lot of, uh, what's the word I want to use? stubbornness and arrogance and like my way or the highway or we have to do things by X, Y, and Z. This is how I want to do it and this is how you should do it too. Not being able to see those other perspectives. Uh, being dominating, being controlling, needing your kids to do things your way, needing your partner to do things your way, needing your team at work to do things your way. Those are all signs that your confidence energy is overactive, overstimulated. Now, being balanced in your confidence energy in and just in a nice, positive, charged up state of confidence is when you are warm and engaging with your team, with your partner, with your kids, with strangers, because you're showing up using your best skills, that you have the people around you, you bring out the best in them. Their superpowers are being turned on because you're using yours. Um, you're playful. You are upbeat. You're outgoing. Not in an overly social, extroverted way, but you're, you're just, you're open to, to new things and new ideas because you know that engagement with others is going to create magic, right? And that confidence that comes when you're in that outgoing state is really a powerful place to be. So give yourself just a quick note of where you might be with your confidence energy. Next one is relationship energy. Now relationships, we have thousands of types of relationships with every different person in our life, right? Relationships with kids, with partner, with clients, with coworkers, with strangers, with the guy that cut you off in traffic. <laughs> we have relationships with everyone. 
The goal with relationship energy is to ensure that you're surrounding yourself with the people that lift you up, but then you're also lifting others as well. That you're not constantly draining them, that it's a reciprocal exchange of energy. So let's give you some ideas as to how you might be drained, overstimulated, or balanced in your relationship energy. So you might be drained in your relationship energy if you're antisocial, you're not wanting to engage with others, and that's different than being introverted. You know, I'm an introvert. That's different than being antisocial. I can still socialize and engage with others, but being antisocial is truly like, I don't want to be around humans. I don't want to give to them. I don't want to receive from them. You're truly antisocial. Um, lacking empathy, not being able to see someone else's perspective or see that someone else is having a difficult time, being stuck in your own drama and not being able to say, okay, I need to either ask for help or give someone help when I'm in the, that state of, of drama. Um, feeling numb, feeling lonely, uh, feeling like you're on an island like there's and there's no one around for you to reach out to or be with. Those are signs that you're drained in your relationship energy. Um, you're overactive in your relationship energy if you get clingy, if you get codependent and you're like, I need this person to be happy or I need that love from someone to be happy or I need this client to sign off for me to be happy. That type of sort of, oh, I need other humans to make me happy is a sign that you're overactive in that relationship energy. Um, another sign of it is not having good boundaries, you know, saying yes all the time, even though <laughs> you don't want to say yes. Um, not being able to say no if you know it doesn't align with your path. So boundaries, having no boundaries is a sign of overactive. Um, being a people pleaser is part of no boundaries and uh, being overactive. If you're balanced in your relationship energy, you feel really connected to others. You feel like there's an equal reciprocation of effort, of receiving and giving, that you lift others, others lift you, that you know who drains you and you minimize your time with them, you know who lifts you up and you spend more time with them, and you're able to see how your actions and your behaviors impact others and how theirs impact you, and you create that reciprocal energy loop. So give yourself a little rating how you do with your relationship energy, knowing that it can be different for each type of energy. All right, the next energy is communication energy. Communication energy is that ability to not just communicate in the speak, type, read, listen type of t traditional description of communication. It's communicating your authentic self, being true to who you are in the way that you're presenting in meetings, in the way that you show up online, in the way that you speak to others, in the way that you feel internally, is you cre you're creating an authentic, version of you and you're communicating that out to the world in a way that creates impact and influence on others, that creates people being magnetized to you, and creates true clarity in the way that you're showing up, in the way that you're putting things out into the world. Now, you could be drained here, and if you have drained communication energy, you may feel like you don't know what to say, you don't know what your voice is, you don't know who you are, you don't know how to say something, um, you feel suppressed, you feel like you're putting on a false face, that you're not living your purpose, that you're not truly showing up as who you are. That's a sign you might have drained communication energy. You can also be overactive here. Uh, narcissism is something that shows up here. Um, and most narcissists would never admit they're a narcissist. So if you're saying to yourself, am I a narcissist? You're probably not. But we probably all know narcissists in our life. True, true narcissism is a psychological challenge that is hard to deal with. So if you deal with narcissism, that's a sign they may have overactive communication energy. Their authenticity is, is a facade, it's a filter that they're putting in front to show up as someone that they're not. Um, you can also be overloaded here if you don't have a filter, if you aren't able to think before you speak or give a message or show up to a meeting or a presentation or sending an email that you, you just have outbursts, you just don't have a filter to 
control how you're communicating something to the world, that's a sign you could be overactive in your communication energy. Charged and balanced energy in communication is really you're able to confidently show up with your true self, that you're not putting on a false front, that you're not trying to be someone you're not, that you're just, you're really, you're feel, you feel good in who you are and how you are showing up as a human. So give yourself a rating there. Now, the next energy is strategic energy. And strategic energy is being able to look at all of the things in your life and in your work and saying, okay, I need to pull these things together to make this plan happen. So strategic thinking, when you're doing a strategic plan at work, you're pulling resources together to make something happen and creating a plan. In your personal life, you actually have strategic energy as well. So strategic energy is really important to be able to pull resources that you need at any given time to make something happen. Now you can be drained here. If you're drained in your strategic energy, you might be over analytical. Um, you might be looking at things and like overthinking and, oh my gosh, but I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And like you, you aren't able to have clarity around things. You feel a little bit scattered. Um, your focus is just really blurry. You're not able to see what you what is in front of you to make those decisions about what needs to be pulled together. And during the pandemic, our strategic energy has been terrible because the stress response clouds our decision making. And that is what happens when your strategic energy gets blocked, gets drained, is you're not able to have that clear thinking. Uh, another sign of your strategic energy being overactive, having too much strategic energy, is not having boundaries. We talked about that earlier, but not having boundaries is like, okay, I'm going to try this and I'm going to try this and I'm going to throw darts at the wall and I'm going to try anything that I can to make something happen without being able to step back and think clearly about, you know, okay, this is actually how I should do it. This is actually the best decision for this project or the best choice for this task. You just start doing stuff without stepping back and saying, okay, what do I need to do first? Um, not having clarity, being really like squirrel mentality is a sign of some overactive strategic energy. When you're balanced, you're trusting your gut. You're trusting your heart. You're intuitive. You can really just, you, you feel like everything is there for you at your disposal and you feel peaceful in knowing that you can choose what you need to to create the path for you in a really strategic way. So identify where you might be with your strategic energy. And then finally, we've got visionary energy. Now, visionary energy is, vision energy is really looking at the future. We did that the first day. We really jumped ahead six months, but you can jump ahead to tomorrow. You can jump ahead a week from now. You can jump ahead 50 years from now. And strategic energy is the, that we talked about yet right before this is you know, pulling all the pieces together. But the vision energy is seeing, being able to see ahead, see how your plan fits into this bigger world, into your community, into the universe, whatever your belief system is. How do you tap into into that to make your vision happen and really just having that clear thinking. Now, you can have drained vision energy when you're skeptical, when you're like, oh, I don't know, I don't think so, or when you second guess yourself, when you're unsure, when you're overthinking, when you're like, oh my gosh, yes, I could do that, but I don't really know, like, what do I really, it, it's, it's just that, that feeling of disengagement with what the future might look like. You could also be overactive here, and that's being ungrounded and, and making choices that are just totally crazy visionary that aren't grounded in reality. Like, oh, I'm going to make $5 million in the next two years, and I don't have any way to get there. You know, like it, it, it's, it's, it's an ungrounded, un, non-backed up decision to make something happen that's really not grounded in reality at all. That can be overactive vision energy. You're really in a grounded, balanced, and perfectly charged up state with your vision energy when you just feel connected to your path, 
to the universe, to the people around you, and you're just really excited for what that next step is, and you're willing to take all these different energies that I've just talked about, pull them together to make that vision happen. So this was a long video, but that's because I had to really dig in to give you the background on these seven energies. So here's what I want you to do for your homework today is I just want you to think about those seven energies and identify where you aren't balanced, where you aren't charged up, where you're either drained or where you're overactivated. And then tomorrow we're going to come back and we're going to actually realign you. We're going to do a couple of, of exercises and I'm going to give you a few ideas to help you realign where, when you find any of those seven are off. Okay? So I hope you enjoyed that and we will see you tomorrow.